name is Julia and um, I'm co-founder and CPO of Task36. And today I'm going to talk about my experience with interviewing uh, potential customers for our startup. Um, this is my contact, uh, content today. So I start with a short intro to our company and then uh, an intro to the customer development concept. Then I'm going to talk about what they teach at the MIT about this topic. And then finally I go into our own interview process and my learnings. At Task 36, we develop a smart planning assistant that supports every member uh, in the company during their planning processes. It also creates the most efficient and realistic project plans. So with Task 36, every team member in the company always knows which task, tasks matters most. Um, it's a unique concept uh, in the market for project management because it combines the best of all three approaches, which is the traditional, the agile, uh, the traditional, the agile, and also the social approach. So, um, most, peop uh, most startups fail because they didn't develop their market and not because they didn't develop their product. Um, the essence of this is very important to us because um, this means that um, there is really no point in developing a product when you don't have a customer that wants to buy this product and hence you don't have a market for it. This is why you need to, um, to verify your hypothesis about the three core aspects of your business, which is the uh, business model, um, the product market fit, and also um, the sales funnel. So in order to validate the assumptions about th these three areas, you need to, go, uh, to get out of the building and start interviewing as many potential customers as possible. And then either you validate your assumptions or you don't. If you don't, then you, it's time to maybe start um, pivoting. Um, the uh, customer development process takes place more or less in parallel to the development of your, pro uh, of your product. So you start developing an MVP and in parallel you go out of the building and uh, get it tested, uh, get feedback on it. So this is an iterative process. Oops, yeah, here you can see build, measure, learn. Um, so together with my, uh, with my team, I participated as the first German startup at the um, MIT Accelerator program last summer. Um, at the MIT Accelerator program in the, um, at the Center for Entrepreneurship in Boston, um, they really support the lean startup principles. Uh, Bill Orlett, he is the managing director of the center. He uh, just recently published a book which is called Discipline Entrepreneurship. And uh, in this book he describes how in 24 steps you build up a, a very successful startup. He also really focuses on the need um, to, to see the world through the eyes of your customer and not through the uh, perspective of the company. So it's <coughs> really important that you get to know your target customer and um, that you define this uh, target customer, which is the customer persona. And by this, of course, you also have your target uh, market segment. So you need to f uh, find out as much as possible about this target customer. And by this, then you are able to really um, customize your product and also your marketing and your messaging to this customer. So um, at Task 36, we have interviewed up to now more or less um, 60 companies. We started um, at the Accelerator in Boston. And um, so we started Im immediately after our product idea. And then we continued interviewing potential customers um, while designing the product and also while designing the MVP, which we are in the process right now. Um, so the most uh, important results um, for now, for us um, doing these interviews with potential customers, are that we shifted from targeting uh, software companies to targeting hardware companies. Um, then we also um, defined our BCHAT market. Uh, and something which is uh, maybe not such a surprise is that we found out that companies in the US are much more uh, driven to innovation and much more open to innovative solutions than uh, German, uh, German companies. So we have to consider this in our marketing and our product design. So I'm going to start with my learnings. Um, so the first thing that when, you, when you think about interviewing potential customers is to set up interviews. Um, to us it works really well to go to events uh, to meet potential people or uh, uh, companies that we can um, interview. One thing I have to say, we are of course uh, B2B uh, in the B2B market, but um, what I'm telling you more or less also works for B2C. So going to events, for instance, meetups like this, um, or also uh, conferences for your target industry, um, it's very easy. You can just go and I really just 
ask people and most of them are really happy to, to, and to, to share their experiences with someone. So it's usually not a problem. The response rate of going to events is 70% for us. So another um, way to get to meet uh, potential um, customers that you can interview is intros. So the, ref uh, the response rate for that is of course very high. It's 80% for us. Um, you also should al always remember when you interview someone that at the end you ask for more referrals. So you can get to know more people that you can interview. Then cold mails. Um, of course, uh, the response rate is less there, but um, we got 20%. It's also, it can be five to 10 would also still be normal. Um, so um, I still recommend it. It's also a good way to see if your problem solution fit is actually resonating in the market because people that respond to your cold emails, they are probably also kind of interested in the entire um, product and, and, and solution that you offer. Um, so uh, we, for instance, we searched through LinkedIn or also through um, industry associations that we just Google and then we send out cold uh, emails. Um, I recommend never to send to info at addresses, but to use the tool reportive.com. Uh, so you can guess the email address, the direct email address, and then it, the tool will tell you if that's correct. Um, there's also another tool, Yesware, which shows you if the email has actually been opened and so you can do some follow up. Um, with that, it's important that you send a good email text. So um, you need to assure um, the people that you really do this uh, not to sell them the product, but because you want to get some new insights. So um, uh, it's very for, for us, it works very well to say that we are a MIT supported startup. But I also recommend if you are, for instance, supported by a university or have any relation to a university to mention that in that email to say, OK, we are a startup supported by the TU because this um, so they see that you're really focused on research and, f and getting insights for your product and not on selling. Um, another thing is that you should always offer two options for the appointment because it's easier for people to choose one than um, having to start looking for appointments themselves. And I also recommend to always follow up because there have really been a lot of cases where uh, um, the, the people did not answer and when I sent another email, they did answer, so it's worth it. Um, so the interview structure, when you create the script for your uh, interview, um, I really recommend to follow the structure. You don't need to use all these parts, but to follow the, the order. Because um, if you, for instance, start asking um, for a, a feedback on your product, um, before you let them talk about their experience, their problems and their needs, this will already bias them in their, answer, in their answers. Um, then you should also think what, what hypothesis you actually want to, to, to test and uh, want to, want to um, validate. And then also you should have very, like you should think about open questions so that you can fi find out things um, that maybe you didn't like really, like you didn't have in your head before. So it's, if it's an open question, the possibility that you catch new insights is higher. Um, we start with demographics, which would be for instance, the age of the person, uh, the position, the company size, etc. Um, then we go on um, with pain points, experience, problems, needs. So um, just let them talk about um, how they deal with situations today. And then this is, uh, we always um, have the wish list question. Uh, so this in our case would be, um, um, so if you could do magic to create your own project management tool, how would it be? We have made very good experience with it. Some people, they don't recommend to have, to have this uh, wish list question, but for us it really works. Um, yeah, I give you another an example for our pain point uh, question. So what I always ask is, um, what are the uh, three um, the, the the three top uh, challenges that you experience um, related to project management in your job? Um, so then the wish list, then the product feedback. So um, in this case, for instance, we ask um, which of the features that I described um, are of most value to you. Um, then the next would be funnel questions. That's all about um, the sales process, the buying process at the company, um, who's, who's taking the purchasing decision. I also ask about price. Um, so I would, for instance, in, about price, I ask them, um, yeah, would you buy our product for this X amount of money per month, for instance? So I really ask very directly. Um, you should consider that um, the end user that you have in mind, which is your, your target customer, is sometimes not the one that takes the a purchasing decision that might be the CEO or someone else. Um, interview questions, how do you design them? So um, my learnings are of course again open questions. Um, so it's important that you just let them let them talk, that um, they can answer in an open unbiased way. 
Um, and by this you really catch a lot of um, how they do things today and um, it's, it's unbiased. Um, the next thing would be um, no leading questions. Uh, so an example of a leading question would be um, how do you make sure that your project plan is optimized? Um, so why is this leading? Because some people might actually never have thought about whether it's optimized or not or whether they should optimize it. So um, a better question would be, um, are you satisfied um, with the results of your planning work? Um, then try to uh, keep things factual. So um, we do this wish list question, but in general you should really focus more in, on asking about how they do things today or in the past. Let them describe how they do it. Um, it's better than, um, they st than when they start doing speculations about uh, something because um, it's always difficult to really predict their behavior. So better let them talk how they do things and then you can really get insights out of that, uh, what their problems are, what their needs are. Um, then you should of course test the questions. Um, so just um, ask, uh, um, yeah, do the interview with some friends that you get a feeling for it, how you run the interview. And um, also, it's the, some, some questions sometimes really don't work and you don't get the answers that we, you were expecting. So I recommend testing it. Um, and keep the sc uh, script consistent, um, but also be flexible. So if you see that, for instance, the MVP uh, develops, then you, can end, um, then you can add some questions to your script, but you should keep it constant in a way so that you have a base of answers that you can easily compare and analyze. So learning uh, during the interview. Um, choose one interviewer in your company because uh, you really become an expert the more you do it. So you get used to it, you get a feeling um, for when there are hot topics somewhere and you need to dig deeper um, and you really learn the questions by heart so you don't need to look on your script. So um, have one person but of course sometimes take, um, if that's possible, take people from your team to the interviews because it's very important that everyone in the team gets a feeling for who are their customers. Um, mode time place and tools. Um, so mode uh, would be if it's face-to-face -face or uh, Skype or a uh, phone. Of course, the best is face-to-face, -face, but um, sometimes it's not possible. So Skype is better than phone and sometimes it has to be phone. Um, usually we do it um, in depth, so very long. That would be like one hour, sometimes it's more. Uh, but keep also a short script with um, only the core questions. So if people don't have time, you can still run a very short interview. Uh, we do it like 20 minutes sometimes. Um, yeah, the tools. So um, you can either take notes or record it. I always uh, recommend uh, recording it. Um, you should ask the person at the beginning, but I have never met anyone who was against that. And that really gives you um, time, like the opportunity to focus on the answers instead um, of taking notes. Um, the only downside with that is that it really takes long to transcribe the notes. So you have to really calculate for one hour audio four hours transcribing. So don't start transcribing everything and just try to, to, um, to, to write down the most important uh, points. But it's also a good way when you listen to it to, anal to start analyzing the interviews already. Um, so when you start with the interview, let them talk, listen to them. If they make a pause, it might be because they, they are thinking. So don't interrupt them because then you might uh, miss the opportunity to get very important uh, things that they say after having thought for a while. Uh, don't pressure them, don't push them to say the answer that you want to hear. It's also important that they understand that they help you more to give you really honest questions instead of uh, telling you what they think you might want to hear. So really make it clear that if they are honest, that's how they most can help you. Um, dig deeper if there is something that you feel you should still, uh, yeah, they, 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 sh they still have to say something on that, even if it's not part of your script. So if you see something hot uh, coming up, so just dig deeper, but don't skip questions of your script, as I said. So you, ha you need to have a base of similar uh, questions in your, in your interview so you can compare them. Uh, words versus meaning, meaning. So a lot of people say something and mean something totally different. Uh, so you have to kind of develop a sense for reading in between the lines and observing them as well. That's why it's also important to not um, take notes, but to really yeah, look at them and um, to, to see what their real opinion and feelings are. Also, if you can um, observe their workflows instead of just having them talk about them, that will also help you to, to, get, to gain more insights. Uh, let them ask questions at the end of the interview. Sometimes there, there, come real, uh, up, there come some really interesting points up at the end. And build up a relationship with them because they might become your first beta testers or later on the pilot uh, customer. 
Um, so keep them up to date and send them a newsletter every once in a while, what's going on with your company. So the analysis, um, it's important that you make it access, uh, accessible to the entire team in an Excel table, for instance, that you share it with your team, you discuss it, that you um, really, yeah, you discuss what you want to take out of the results of the interviews, what you do with it. Um, yeah, share it with the entire team. Follow up with a uh, quantitative survey if you want, because uh, keep in mind that uh, interviews is qualitative data, so um, there are some things that you will never find out with a survey, but only with an interview. But on the other side, um, you never get the mass answers that sometimes you just want to have about one single question. So there are tools like SurveyMonkey, um, which you can um, easily use for making surveys. Um, use the interview findings for your communication with investors, uh, future customers. It usually impresses them if you can say, yeah, we have run this and this amount of interviews and um, the results are this and this. So, um, yeah, your, your, your process is really funded by what you found out. Um, and I also recommend to analyze the interviews as soon as possible because you can already catch some insights from only three to five interviews. And that's uh, very valid if you have... Uh, yeah, some information as, as soon as possible and shared with your team, of course. So, and I finished this with an, uh, with an interesting sentence from Steve Job about this. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Questions? Uh, yeah. no. Questions, show hands around to you. Yeah, I would just uh, take you up on that last quote because it could be read in contradiction to everything you said before. Um, maybe you want to explain a little bit on, on this one. Um, yeah, so it's not the customer's job to know what they want. That is true. So it's um, a little bit about what I said at the end that sometimes they tell you something but they mean something different. So um, that, that's kind of a problem and you should consider that um, it's not like um, doing magic. If you interview them, you will get all your answers. You have to really, uh, that's why I say you have to observe them and you don't, uh, you, you should also not take it like for granted. So what they tell you is just, um, yeah, it's, it's something you can work with, but it's not the end of everything. And as I said, focus more on their experiences, on what, what they've done in the past, what they do today, instead of um, having them talk too much about what they want and what they wish. And because, as I said, predicting the behavior from the words of customers or potential customers is difficult because of that as well. Okay. More questions? Uh, what were your greatest uh, findings from the interviews or the topics uh, you recommend to do interviews for the most? Uh, well, the most interesting findings were uh, to see that um, the, the, the core assumptions were true, that the problems that we thought people have with project management, they do have that. And um, also that the solutions that we offer fit with that. So um, the problems that, that, that most people had um, would be solved by what we think, what, what we do with our software. And um, also the, an important thing we found out was that um, software development uh, processes, they maybe don't fit as well as hardware um, project, uh, ma project management uh, processes because they have a different way of organizing their, uh, their projects. And that was something that we weren't so clear about at the beginning. Um, do you experience any differences in uh, the time when you interviewed someone? Was it maybe better in the morning after breakfast or shortly before dinner? I don't know, were there any significant results you can, you can share with us? No, I mean, it's always good when they are relaxed. Um, so it's always good for lunch or um, so if you feel like they are like you write them and they oh I don't have time of course that might be difficult um, it's always better when you feel okay they have time so when they maybe write you yeah this time is bad but next week I would have more time I was uh, would always take the, the option when they have more time and, uh, and it's good to go to their offices and to go to an environment where they feel uh, yeah more relaxed and, and, sec and, and secure okay, one person in the back how much time did it take you to do 60 interviews? Uh, well, we started like in August and um, we have done them more or less till December. So there were, it depends, like, I mean, it was possible to have like 
it's, po it's possible to have 10 interviews every week if you want, if you really push it. It's possible through the methods that I described. But um, yeah, it's also a lot of work to analyze them, so it depends. But um, that's the time frame that we had so far. Um, how do you get them to spend an hour with you? What do you offer in return? Actually, nothing. I mean, you can offer them something like, um, yeah, um, I will tell you some. Uh, I will tell you the, the most recent um, news about um, the the industry or about the software that we are developing, and give you our insights and and um, feedback from from the market that we got so far. But usually, they don't even expect that. So if you, and that's why I, I foc uh, focus so much on saying you really want this for insights and for research, of course, for your company, but not in this moment for selling them. And um, if people understand that, that they actually they like um, sharing their experiences. And that's also, I mean, if they don't like it or if they are not interested, they are also not interested in, in the product that you're trying to sell. All right, any more questions? Um, I think 60 is a, seems to be a lot of interviews. As I take it, there have been like different iterations of the product in, in the meantime. So what would you say like between iterations and kind of a new reason to ask interviews again. How many interviews do you think you need at least and at what point you don't learn so much more um, by increasing the number of interviews? Well, it's difficult because you can always like, with everything that you change and modify, you can have another round. But I think the most important part for us um, was really at the beginning after the product idea and before we really started developing it um, to make sure that our ideas are supported by most of the people. That was the most important part. And now we go out sometimes and check um, a new marketing ankle message. And um, yeah, I mean, another thing is really um, testing the MVP and, and mock-ups. But there's always something to test. But I think interviews, um, the most important point in which they help is really the, the problem solution fit. OK. So I would suggest to take more to discuss it more in the break. So thanks Julia again. Thank you.